my staff was telling me, oh, he wants to do this and he needs to do this and he needs access to this and they need to do this. And I'm like, well, what is this? Connie Wolf, our new director here at the Cantor Art Museum, heard that there was this doctor who took other doctors over to the Cantor and students over to the Cantor to look at the hands. We have one of the largest and most important collections of Rodin sculptures. We have over 200 works here on view and on campus. And uh, what you will discover when you see the works is that Rodin had a real interest in the human hand. It began maybe 15 years ago. At that time I was training as a surgery resident over at Stanford, right across the street. And over this time I began to notice that many of the hands in Rodin's sculptures looked exactly like the medical hand conditions I was treating. I began teaching a sophomore seminar class at Stanford called Surgical Anatomy of the Hand from Rodin to Reconstruction. The idea of the course was to teach them hand anatomy but make it come alive. I would give the students lectures on various topics on hand reconstruction, tissue engineering research, and hand transplantation. Then we would come to the canter and discuss the Rodin collection and specifically the Rodin hands. I think that the modern day vision of bringing to life art and anatomy is in the form of Bob Chase who is the, you know, kind of the ringleader in all this and making sure that scientists and artists talk to each other. We began to collaborate with the Division of Anatomy here at Stanford, which is in the Department of Surgery. They're really well known for being able to apply three-dimensional computer graphics to anatomy and to use that for teaching. There's been a long tradition of that back from Professor Robert Chase. Dr. Ladd and Dr. Chase had long been interested in scanning the Rodin hands so we could create three-dimensional models. Once you have a three-dimensional computer model, it can be used a number of ways. Two years ago, in the summertime, after years of discussing how we would do this, we designed a project for summer interns. So we had two of the students design this project. Amy Ladd's chief of her department, Jim Chang, offered to pay for the scans and in return he would get the scans to use in his lectures. Once those uh, sculptures were scanned, our medical artist uh, refined those models and basically turned them into virtual replicas of the sculptures. Once we have those ready, we take uh, human CT scan data, convert that into 3D models and then position the models inside this virtual sculpture. After we had the three-dimensional models, uh, Matt Hassel and the students uh, and I all made a video of the project. We invited the museum um, staff over to see the video on the scanning. And after they saw the video, it was quite spectacular, they, they said, let's make an exhibit. The art provides an entry point. The surgery itself provides an entry point, but the technology links the two together and allows new ways of knowing, of learning, of experimenting, and of discovery. And so the technology that we're integrating into this exhibition is unlike anything we've ever done here at the museum. And quite frankly, I think it is quite unique anywhere in any museum to be able to bring these three ideas together. Now I think it's the right culmination of technology and uh, the right people for those things that might have been difficult or inaccessible suddenly are. I think that's the beauty of the class and the exhibition. It's all one thing. We're appreciating beauty in, in many different forms. I don't really divide the art from the anatomy because to me anatomy is art and art is anatomy. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.